Hi, I'm Jay Tyler. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the fundamentals of anchorage in orthodontics. Now, a lot of what I do is for beginners, and this video is for beginners. If you're a seasoned technician, you may find this a little bit basic, but it never hurts to review the fundamentals. Sir Isaac Newton's third law says that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So let's see that we have two trees. I <laughs> have to pardon my drawing. This looks more like broccoli than a tree, but let's just say this is a big tree and this is a little tree. And let's say we stretch a rubber band out in between them and we have a gauge in the middle. So as you pull on this tree, there's going to be an equal force. This force this way is going to be exactly the same as this force this way. Now, this same thing in dentistry. Uh, let's see, we have two incisors. And uh, let's say we're going to do some kind of an appliance that's going to close the space between these two incisors. Let's say we have something like a, a spring that, say, let's go, goes up here and has a helix here. And we're going to close that helix and cause a force to go this way. And it's going to be an equal force this way. You're not going to have a greater force on one side than the other side. They're going to be equal. And since these teeth are approximately the same size, they're probably going to come together at, at the same rate. Now the same thing with uh, like a molar. Let's say this is a distal view. We're looking anteriorly. Let's say we put bands around these molars and we're wanting to expand them out. And we want to expand them out equally. So if you had something like a transpeltal arch that came down, maybe had a loop in it and went up here, and you expanded this arch, you would get equal movement. But now, what happens when you have a uh, two teeth of a different size? Well, it's kind of like this, uh, kind of like the tree that we showed you before, where you have the bigger tree and the smaller tree. So, if you on on the tree, if you put the rubber band in there, say it's a big tight rubber band, and uh, this tree starts to incline, well, this tree probably won't because it's bigger. It's a bigger tree, and it's got greater roots in the earth than this one. So if anything's going to bend, it's going to be the smaller tree. This might bend minusculely, but it may not bend at all. Same thing with uh, like a molar and an incisor. So if you were wanting to push an incisor forward, then you would uh, you could put something on a molar and say you had something here with a, some kind of a spring mechanism to push this forward. And you would might get some movement here, but most of the movement's going to be here, even though there's the same amount of force on the molar as there is on the incisor. There's exactly the same amount of force here as there is here. But so what determines what's going to move, just like with the tree, is the, the anchorage. Uh, so this tree has greater anchorage. Like I said, it has more roots in the earth. And then this tree, just like this, has more root in the alveolar process. Uh, this has more root in the alveolar process than this incisor. And let's say that the density of the alveolar process throughout the arch is the same. So let's just assume that so there's no discrepancy there to be considered. So what they did in early dentistry is they would take human teeth and they would dip them in wax and then spread the wax out and measure as best they could the root surface area. And what they were trying to determine is how many teeth they would have to gang up on to move different teeth. And uh, now with digital technology, that's an easy thing to do. They can get it exact, but they've long since figured all this out. So basically, it just makes a lot of sense. If you got a molar pushing against an incisor, you may get a little movement here, but you're going to get more movement there. All right, so if you've got a situation like, uh, let's say this right here, and you've got a bicuspid that's in lingual version to the rest of the arch, and let's say we just go across from this bicuspid, put a band on that, and a band on this, and some kind of spring mechanism in here to push this out buckly. Well, if you look at it, uh, this is crowded out. So it's not only the root surface area of this bicuspid, it's also being getting anchorage from these teeth. So if you put a band here and a band here and pushed, you're probably going to move this tooth out. It's a little bit tight in there, but not as much as this one. So uh, if you were to take a disc and slice on either side of this and free this tooth up, and you push here and here, if this has any kind of uh, crowding where it's uh, 
you know, where it's kind of ganged up on with these adjacent teeth, this, these teeth will add to the anchorage of this tooth. And if this has the slicing on either side, this tooth will be free, then it will buccalize and this will stay uh, the same. But if this free tooth is free to go buccally as well, even though the crown's been reduced here, the root structure is the same and the lateral force on these teeth is going to be the same, so these teeth would move the same. So not only would this tooth be buccalized, this tooth would also be buccalized. But now what if we put a band on here and we did an extension and included uh, this molar and this molar and this bicuspid here. So now you have four teeth ganging up on one tooth and the resultant movement of course is going to be this one bicuspid. So in orthodontics they're always talking about anchorage. And uh, here's another case where we have a lateral that's in lingual version to the rest of the arch. It's a little bit crowded, so they may take out a disc and open that space up a little bit, or they may move these teeth out of the way just to give room for that incisor to go forward. But typically here you would put like a band on the six-year molar. Now the six-year molars have more root surface area than any other tooth in the mouth. So they're often used. Uh, these are deciduous second molars instead of second bicuspids. But anyway, if you put... Uh, a band here and a band here and a wire up here with some kind of a spring mechanism to push on the lingual of this incisor to move it labially, then of course the, mo the movement would be the incisor labially. There would not be hardly any detectable movement with these molars at all. Now not only are these molars tied together, to, like tying two trees together to push against a smaller tree, but they also are in contact with the second and third molars on both sides. So this tooth has an equal force. Whatever force you put on this tooth, the same amount of force is going to be applied distally to these molars. But these molars are in contact with the second molars and the third molars, so you've got basically six molars here ganging up on one incisor. So obviously the movement is going to be the incisor forward. Now let's look at a situation where we have a crossbite. Here's an upper cuspid that's in crossbite. And that means it's on the wrong side of the arch. Now, there's a thing called functional resistance when you're moving a tooth, such as this. So if you could make a mechanism where you would have, say, you tie the molars together and you run a wire up here and put some kind of spring mechanism to put a force this way. Well, there's going to be an equal and opposite force this way. But since the molars are tied together, they're going to be kind of like two trees tied together and they're going to be one big sound thing. And since the force is this way, well, it's going to be banging against this molar too. So that's going to be incorporated into it. So basically, you're going to have like three molars tied together to push that out. But you have functional resistance. That means every time the patient bites, it's going to, the biting of it is going to, the function of biting is going to resist the movement of the tooth. So you can make bite opening devices, either with a lingual anterior bite plane or a posterior bite plane to open up the bite to free it so that the tip of the cuspid is free to move out and that would eliminate that uh, posterior or that uh, functional resistance. Now let's uh, imagine that uh, you have a unilateral posterior crossbite and it would look like this. Uh, so if let's say the other side is fine, let's say it's in the proper bite form, uh, even though these teeth are end to end, they're not in a class one occlusion, they're end to end, but they do have intercuspation, which means the cusps of the one arch fit into the fossas of the opposing arch. So you, they lock in real well. Now, if this side were in crossbite and the other side was not in crossbite, then when you start moving this crossbite side out, uh, ev you will have equal and opposite forces. Um, and you will have the good side, you will be trying to push it out as well. We try to push it out and you'll end up with like a buckle bite over here. Now, also the functional resistance uh, would come into play with this as well. So as this starts to go buckly, it would ride up. And when this rides up, it's also going to cause the other side to ride up. And then that intercuspation that was we were using as part of the functional mechanism or the anchorage mechanism would no longer be applied. So how do you put force uh, to drive just one side out? Well, Dr. Nord came up with a really neat idea. He decided that if you were to take um, an appliance and put a screw in it, let's say that's a screw, and let's say this is the side that needs to go out, and he decided if you were to put clasps on the teeth and really knock it, uh, uh, nail it down real well and just get it really anchored down real well, 
and let's say that uh, the first, second, uh, first and second bicuspids and first and second molars on this side need to go back. So if you were to split the acrylic here and here, then you would have all of these teeth and even some action up here. You might even have a labial bow come in here like that. So you're tying all these teeth together to push against that. Now he also thought that what if on the side that we don't want to go buccally, we put a flange, just extend that acrylic so that it engages the lingual of the opposing arch. Then every time they bite, it will be not only taking advantage of the anchorage of all these teeth pushing against this, but it would also engage the anchorage of these teeth as well. And that would be something like, like this. So this would be the crossbite side. This would be the side that you don't want. So if you had acrylic in here like this, he would just bring the acrylic down like this so that it would engage the lingual of those teeth. So now you have all of these teeth and all of these teeth in the posterior ganging up to, so when the screw is turned, it will push these teeth buckily out of crossbite. So there are other, all kinds of mechanisms that it doesn't really matter what the force is. It's all a matter of anchorage. So if, if you wanted, like again, let's say you had these teeth right here and you wanted to move them out. Well, you could come up with a system where you would have like a band on this tooth and a band on this tooth. And you could have, uh, say, a quad helix appliance where you have four helices here and then an, uh, a wire that could come all the way around here, could come all the way around. And then you could bond this wire onto these teeth and have an extension back here onto this second molar. And that would be all of these teeth pushing against this. And most of the motion would be here. You might get a minuscule amount of motion there, but it could be a quad helix. It could be a transpeltal large. It could be a removable appliance with a screw. It doesn't really matter what it is as long as you gang up on a lot more than the other side that you want to be moved. And if you have a flange that engages the opposing arch, you have cross arch anchorage and it just doesn't get any better than that. That way you've got all of these teeth and all of these teeth ganging up on this. So the resultant movement will be the cross bite moving buckly out of cross bite. Well, I hope that helps you understand the basics of anchorage and orthodontics. Now, if you're brand new to the field, I have a DVD program called Orthodontic Laboratory Basics. It's a complete course designed to teach you the fundamentals of what you need to know to be able to make basic orthodontic appliances. You can check it out on our website at ortholabvideos.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.